Welcome to the season two opener of the Miseducation of the People podcast. Episode MOTP 201, Losses to Blessings. In this particular episode, we're talking about setting boundaries with people, especially parents, and taking those losses from life, finding those lessons, and turning those into blessings that will allow for us to grow. Beats by Pete Samples. Miseducation. Yo, what's good, what's good? New Miss Education. the Baldy God with the superbly supreme gleam, Now I mean? <laughs> Top two baldies, and I'm not number two. Certified Baldy Boy. Smoothest body on both sides of the Mason-Dixon line. Body so smooth, they can't believe it's not butter. Your host, Taryn Morgan. Welcome to the season two opener of the Miss Education of the People podcast. Episode MOTP 201, Losses to Blessings. Reporting live from the Black Cave, you know, new environment, you know. I'm just like Bruce Wayne, except for I'm black, bald, and middle class. But, you know, we make it happen out here, for real, for real. So, happy new year, first off. It's 2022, feeling fully renewed, new environments, better vibes, energy, and I'm charged up just to smashing the obstacle that comes before me. But before, you know, we get into it, of course we got to do the shout-outs. You know, we do it for the people with them, you know? So shout out to the cafeteria ladies out there. They all be like, hey, hey baby, baby, baby. I don't understand what it is. It got to be in the manual. Every single state I've been in, all the cafeteria ladies say, hey, hey baby, baby. baby. Even the ones that's younger than me. So I don't know what it is. But shout out to y'all for real, for real. Especially the ones that be showing a little extra love on the scoops with the food. You real, you real. Shout out to everybody on their journey to become the best version of themselves. Or like Kelly from Insecure said, everyone I associate with is thriving in abundance limitless you know we are here and shout out to my canada dry drinkers you know the more superior ginger ale out there you know uh in the black community we swear that ginger ale is a form of medication and with these covid numbers going up we need all the help we can get and until these numbers go down don't ask me to come outside at all i'm for the sheets and not for the streets and that's why i'll be chilling until these numbers go back down significantly but um, definitely thank y'all for being patient uh, while, you know, I was on my Atlanta Donald Glover long ass season break tip, you know, had to get right in a few other areas. You know, sometimes you got to focus your energy on different things in order for it to grow. And that's what I had to do. You know, we're going to talk about it, though, between, you know, these next couple episodes and all that good stuff. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there, though, for real, for real. Um, so we have a few changes, obviously, as you can see, we now have the video, so y'all can see the body in full effect and all that good stuff. Um, but also we are moving to bi-weekly. Um, it just makes things easier. Um, you know, we got the video we got to edit and eventually we will be able to get back into, uh, more weekly stuff. But until then, you know, we got, we got to move, you know, how we move. We want to make sure we still feeding y'all out here. So this episode is called losses to blessings and in case you don't know all of these episodes are titled after songs so losses to blessings by conway the machine is what inspires this episode right here right so in this particular episode we're talking about setting boundaries with people especially parents and taking those losses from life finding those lessons and turning those into blessings that will allow for us to grow so that's what this episode is all about so since last time y'all heard from me, I moved to Baltimore. I said, Baltimore accents, say this phrase out loud. Earn, earn, and earn, earn. Hold on, my earn, earn. Aaron, earn, and I earn, earn. Shout out to my Baltimore people out here. This is my second home. I always felt a connection here. Um, I lived down here from 2010 to 2014. I got my first master's degree down here, um, and I just fell in love. Uh, I left for a few reasons, uh, because one, I wasn't trying to be a token black working at a white institution, uh, university. Um, oftentimes at white universities, they use any black person they can be to be on all these different committees without any composition, uh, compensation for diversity reasons, AKA for numbers, for the perception, for the performative act. I wasn't feeling that. So, you know, I had to dip. But I had some other issues going on with family, so I wanted to be closer to them. So fast forward to today, though, right? 
2021 ended on a very, very, very good note for me. However, prior to December, there were tests that were very real that came up in my life. When you are trying to elevate, you are hit with different trials that will make you a better person. Only if you take those lessons from what it's teaching you and apply it and move a different way accordingly, right? So as they say, new levels, new devils. So for me, starting in 2018, Round one. started dealing with depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation. The reward was the creation of this platform, the Real Talk Session Series. Then I was struggling to find a job, Round two. two master degrees, can find nothing at all. The reward was being able to come back to a work environment that I loved. And that was at the beginning of 2020, prior to the pandemic. Then Round three. the pandemic started and I ended up breaking off my engagement. The reward was that I was able to gain a better understanding of who I was as a man. And it gave me a new passion to take the steps that are needed to become better in all aspects of my life. Then 2021 came around and it got super real. So last season, I spoke about how I moved back home during the pandemic after I broke off my engagement. And I was super excited to spend more time with my father. But with this new level, it presented a brand new devil. Round four. I'm not speaking on this topic to be messy at all. I'm speaking on it because I see from my observations and conversations that my millennial peers, we're all kind of in the same boat when it comes to our parents and their unhealed trauma. You know, our generation is really focusing on bettering ourselves mentally, healing ourselves from things from our childhood traumas and learning positive coping mechanisms. Um, our parents were, well, our black parents, you know, if you're black, of course, you know, um, they're the civil rights babies. You know, they dealt with a lot of uh, discrimination, racism, et cetera. And those things at an early age, it can really mess with you, you know, and mental health was not a thing at all. In fact, you know, that was a, a thing of weakness. Uh, it was needed for survival at the time because, you know, you had to be strong in order to advance. But now it's something that no longer serves them or anyone at all, you know. So putting a bigger emphasis on our healing allows for us to also see the other side of it is that, you know, the people around us who are hurting and, as they say, misery loves company, you know. So when it came to my when it comes to my relationship with my father, um, a lot of his unhealed trauma prevented us from being able to get closer. Um, I noticed that he would lie on me and he would lie to me along with a lot of other things that I won't, won't be real that aren't in alignment with my morals or values as the man I am and the man that I'm growing in, in to be, you know? And um, when I think about it, you know, back in the day, uh, I had an issue with lying a lot. And, you know, as children, we learn from our environment. And I saw that, you know, through my healing journey, that's where I got it from. And I was able to break that pattern. Um, and I saw that and I realized that, you know, when it comes to loyalty, I'm very big on helping people to become the best versions of themselves, you know? Um, and I had multiple conversations with my father and tried to help him and give him a chance to become better because that's my father. You know, I didn't want to give up on him, but ultimately you know, my attempts failed and my energy was drained and I couldn't focus on what I needed to do to advance myself. It was hard for me to find peace within the house and to stay motivated. But luckily, I have an amazing mentor, Dr. Douglas Gwynn. Um, eventually, we will have him on here, too, because I think it's very important for us to talk about mentorship and whatnot. But he was able to assist me during a period where I needed it the most. And he was a man that came through for me because a lot of times I had men who were in my life who said they were going to do something, but the actions weren't aligning with their words, you know. But um, luckily for me, he was able to assist me with some temporary housing until I was able to get back on my feet. In life, people, situations, etc., are going to try you, which is the inevitable. But in the words of Dale from Detroit Urban Survival Training. Well, what if you get shot? Well, sometimes you get shot, but here's what you don't want. You don't want to get shot a lot. I'm a big advocate for extending grace to others because you never know what someone's going through, but you have to recognize when it's time to enforce boundaries. Just because someone is your family, it does not give them an unlimited opportunity to violate you. Love does not hurt. We all have something that's going on in our lives, but that does not give you a pass 
to treat people who love you like shit. When I moved back to Baltimore in April 2021, I actually cut my father off for six months at the time. Um, initially, I was hurt, hurt, hurt. Um, I remember just crying within that room for days uh, and really just questioning, like, how could this happen? You know, but through my healing journey, you know, you have to really sit in it. And that's a part of the process. That's the journey. You can't distract yourself from the issue and expect it not to trigger you next time it comes up. You have to really, really sit in it in order to process it and move forward. Healing isn't linear at all. So it still hits me every now and then. But, you know, I'm way better than I was before because I took the time to actually intentionally heal this part of myself. Um, so I do get a lot of messages from music. And one day I was really going through it and randomly on my playlist, um, Spotify has an amazing like algorithms and all that stuff, you know, right? But um, this song by Lady Ray, Peace of Me, came on. The hook instantly hit me and it said, I let you take a piece of me. I hope it's the peace that you need. And if that's not enough, I will let you leave peacefully. Sometimes you have to love people from afar to protect your peace. And I'm all about helping people go through things. But the person you're trying to help has to truly be ready to make an honest attempt to change. Once you see the words and actions aren't matching, you have to pull back to ensure that they don't pull you down with them. You know, misery loves company. But because I'm big on gratitude and truly, truly understanding what life lessons are teaching me, this situation was a beautiful thing for me because I have a growth mindset, right? And it allowed for me to learn. If I didn't, I would have the victim mindset blaming him and for everything. And I wouldn't be able to move forward in a positive manner. But I'm grateful for the fact that this taught me how to be a better man, a better husband, and a better father. I'm not a husband. I'm not a father. But in the future, I will be. But, you know, by looking at everything that he did and wasn't doing for his family, I was able to see, OK, this is what I need to do in the future. And I was able to see some of the stuff I was doing back in the day when I was a fuck boy that I, you know, kind of got from my father. I'm grateful that it taught me not to romanticize the potential of people. Yes, you can see what they can be, but you have to believe what people show you ultimately, not their words. Lastly, I'm grateful for the situation because it woke up a whole new beast within me that I did not know existed, for real, for real. The man that birthed me played me, but I stood 10 toes down and didn't back down at all. I made it a point to demand more for myself, from him, and from anyone else who is out there, you know? Because of this, no one can play with me from now on, you know? Um, I don't care if it's a person, a job, etc. You will put some respect on my name because I bring immense value to whatever table I'm a part of. And it also provided me the importance of establishing and honoring your boundaries. It wasn't until I took the leap of moving to Baltimore and betting on myself to create a life of abundance and peace that I deserve that I realized the power that was within me. Um, it taught me that you will never have full control of your life. And sometimes you have to surrender to the situation. Like Queen Mariah Carey said, I'll do the best I can with what I got. I'd appreciate who I was at the time and to just push forward because I was enough, even though it was hard for me to believe at that point in time in my life. A lot of my anxiety came from really thinking in the future. And I was overthinking of what will happen. You know, it, I had to be more intentional about being in the present right now, you know, because oftentimes we have a habit of thinking forward and not actually, you know, enjoying what's going on within our lives right now. And the progress that we were making, even though it's slow progress, it is progress. Similar to grass. You don't really notice grass growing, but you look at it in a week, it's growing. That's what we are too. And what really helped me secure the mindset was when I moved to Baltimore. Like I said earlier, new levels, new devils. And when I moved, I had a new devil I had to deal with. And that was being lonely and dealing with my codependency head on. Um, I had friends in Baltimore, but I was still extremely cautious because everything going on with the pandemic and my financial situation was trash. Um, 
prior to this, you know, I two master's degrees. I've never made over fifty thousand dollars ever, which in America, you know, capitalism, yay, and having seventy thousand dollars in student loans, you know. But you know, with my situation, it really allowed for me to transform. When I moved down here, um, I initially was in a 370 square foot apartment that I barely could fit in. So having company wasn't realistic for me. And it was not in alignment with me coming down here to better myself. Um, I wanted to be intentional about growing emotionally, financially, mentally, spiritually. Um, like I said, 2021 ended for me very, very well. You know, I actually ended up getting a promotion, but I had to do the work to get to that point. I had to use my gifts that allowed for me to open up doors. Um, I had to step on my discipline because that's what builds the positive habits that will push you forward to success. So I noticed that, you know, discipline will always take you further than motivation will. There will be days when you don't feel like pushing towards your goal, but that's when the discipline kicks in. Success leaves clues. And when you're looking at the greats like Jay-Z, uh, Dr. Eric Thomas, uh, billionaire Robert Smith, they have strong routines and are extremely disciplined in order to where they are getting where they are currently and where they are going in the future. For me, this period of my life, this this period of solitude was crucial. It made me comfortable with being lonely. Prior to this, I was always latching on to someone else, especially exes, when that codependency kicked in heavily. Um, I thought that someone else would bring me that peace, that happiness, that puzzle piece to complete me, but that was within me already. I just really had to dig deep in order to find that and to be comfortable with being by myself and loving myself, building that self-love. 2021 really made me evolve similar to like a caterpillar going into a cocoon and coming out as a flying butterfly. It made me demand more of myself and others and it reeled my worth and value. I went into the year tired of losing. I was losing, losing. Like I said, two master degrees, never making over $50,000. And I was a people pleaser. So I had to learn how to stop being a people pleaser and to speak on what I knew because I was doing major things. I had the receipts to prove it, but I was struggling with imposter syndrome. Once I got past the imposter syndrome, I was able to see that anything I touch literally turns to gold, but it was a journey where I had to trust the process. I saw that I'm good at everything that I'm good at. I stayed in my lane, and that's not on no cocky shit at all. I realized that my failures came from trying to follow what society told me what to do. But when it came to things such as things that came to me easily, like producing videos, public speaking, et cetera, I took that from granted. And those were respective gifts that were given to me by God. I had to develop faith in my abilities, then do the work that will allow for my gifts to open up doors for me, to make room. That's when God, my ancestors, spirit gods came into play. As I was pushing along, achieving my goals with, you know, no, no sight of where I'm going. I didn't know when the journey was going to end. You know, they, God, ancestors, and my spirit guys, they acted like bowling lanes, you know, like the bumpers. So I'm pushing along and, you know, they're pushing me back and forth, back and forth, ensuring that I'm going down the lane to get the strike, you know. And I am kind of nice in bowling, though, so anyway, so I don't really need the bumpers. But, you know, when it comes to life, you know, you had to surrender. And that's what had happened in that situation right there, you know. That's what had happened, you know. <laughs> but um, over the years, you know, many doors have kept closing in my life but the main thing was that I kept knocking and the right doors opened for me finally and I got a major promotion and I created a brand new opportunity that allowed for me to truly shine you know your boy's so nice I made him tie to me twice I might mess around and make that thrice y'all y'all better be happy I don't rap because I'll be killing y'all for real for real but um we'll talk about that next opportunity next episode which is esports when you have a mental blockage where you know you have what it takes, but you're unable to actually push forward and to achieve those things, it's real, real. I super understand how people romanticize conversations about dreams, ideas, 
and then they do not actually execute on them. That was me for many years. Um, it's hard to get out of your comfort zone. It's the fear of the unknown. And that's the point. Life, you're not going to know what's going on. You have to surrender. Um, you have to step out on faith and do the work. The blessings will come in due time, not your time, but you must be resilient and persistent. The journey of accomplishing a major goal will take a toll on you, but getting the reward is not an easy journey. If it was, everybody would do it, you know? Society has conditioned us to love instant gratification, but that is not realistic when you are destined for greatness. All right, so progress report of what's going on at the Real Talk session series, you know? So over the break, I actually started writing my first book, The Rebirth of the Phoenix. Um, it's about my crazy ass life. I've had a lot of situations, but ultimately I was able to gain different lessons that I wish I knew younger. I was moving out here with no guidance. I learned hard. Like Jay-Z said, Hope did that. So hopefully you ain't got to go through that. These are the lessons that men, teenagers, anyone in general can use to advance their life. If you know, they don't have people who are able to push them forward accordingly, you know? Um, my pop pop always talked about writing his life journey, his story before he passed, but he never got to. So this is also part of his dream. You know, the pain that he encountered before I was born is within my blood. That anger, that rage of not getting what he truly deserved from these colonizers. You know, my family is known for football, the Morgans. And I used to hear stories all the time from my family members about how they would push the ball all the way down the field, right in the red zone, 10 yards before a touchdown. But they would be substituted out and a below average white boy would be put in to get the glory of scoring a touchdown. You know, this book is for my family and anyone else that is tired of the bullshit crumbs that society is giving us sparingly, sparingly, because I can't speak right now. But anyway, <laughs> Rebirth of the Phoenix coming very soon. And we got the shirts, you know, we got the merch. We got more stuff coming too. all Purchases are investments towards the Real Talk session series. It allows for us to create more educational content. You know, it takes money to pay color uh, creatives a color to edit stuff, to film stuff. It costs to um, rent out spaces to film content. It costs to have editors to get this podcast out faster. You know, if you want more than bi weekly, you know, we even need some help. So please consider visiting the merch shop at www.realtalksessionseries.org slash shop. And if you don't want to spend money, that's fine. You know, we still rock with y'all. We support y'all. We love y'all no matter what. So please make sure you're liking, subscribing, commenting, rating, reviewing the podcast. So do that on any podcast, podcast platforms, Apple, you know, leave a five-star review, leave a rating and you know, boom, we good. Go on YouTube, this video right here, like the video, subscribe, and share it with a friend for real, for real, because this helps us to grow. And we are on a mission to empower black communities and help people to, and generally just grow and become the best versions of themselves. So we are at the end of the episode. I appreciate you for watching. Remember that if you are moving from a positive place that you don't have to worry about revenge, God, your ancestors, they're going to spin the block sounding like a West Side Gun ad lib track. And not just on those that did you wrong, but with your blessings, because you are operating from a higher vibrational place. And when you're putting out good to the universe, it comes back to you eventually. You know, challenges are going to come your way, but don't weather the storm. Be that motherfucker. That's a quote I love from the Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes movie, um, True Story on Netflix. So make sure I check that out. But start guarding the gates to your peace. Respect yourself and honor your boundaries. No one, including family, is entitled to your presence. It is a privilege. Don't tolerate people, jobs, etc. that bring you negativity and does not acknowledge the value that you bring. Like Drum said, you gotta go, you gotta go. You gotta go, you gotta go. Good riddance to anything and everything that is not, not in alignment with your future. I want you all to adopt this mindset in 2022 and beyond. 
Once I applied these lessons, my blessings started to pour in and that started my elevation. You cannot reach new heights if you are weighed down. Shit, we can fly together if your intentions are pure, but if not, goodbye. All right, cool. See y'all in two weeks. Thanks for watching.